today we are going to talk about uh, this uh, cloud which is a very hot uh, topic now uh, everybody is like trying to become a cloud engineer and all those stuff for uh, whatever reasons it, it it is applicable to them uh, as usual um, just to repeat the rules uh, that we had earlier also uh, here any point in time if you have any doubt don't hesitate to unmute yourself and you can ask your questions you don't need to wait till the end we will stop answer your question and then keep moving and the more the questions that you ask will make the sessions more interesting um so with that introduction uh, we will get into the cloud moment so before we go uh, i just want to understand how many of you are uh, practicing cloud uh, uh, in their applications uh, and what different kind of cloud providers that we use you can put it in the chat message Uh, any any cloud that you are using, you can put it in the chat message. We'll take it from there. So Azure, Jabbar is using Azure. Uh, we are using AWS, uh, OCF. Um, okay, nobody is using GCP. AWS plus GCP. Okay, so we are saying that multi-cloud. Okay, very good, very good. Now uh, I have another uh, very specific question. So uh, consider that you are using AWS or you are using the OS, uh, GCP or whatever it is. How many of you are using uh, uh, are installing that uh, their own CLI which has all the power packed features? Whether it is AWS CLI or GCP, they have G Cloud CLI. Azure has a CLI. If I, if I remember correctly, how many of you are using CLIs in your local development machine? That is the tools. Uh, azure means you are using azure you will install some azure tools uh, aws cli is okay for s3 we are using some clis uh, jabber is not using any cli it seems uh, okay azure cli uh, cube login cube ctl uh, bala when you say cube login it's cube ctl right cube control cube ctl tool right okay so okay now one one only one person is uh, deviating from this using clis so let us ask him uh, jayesh so you are not, you, are, you said you are not using cli right then how do you connect your cloud we connect it uh, through uh, putty Oh, okay, that's excellent. You are connecting through Putty. How do you deploy your uh, software to test it? Say, for example, if you are making a change, how you need to deploy that yeah. to the cloud and then see the changes, right? How do you do that? Um, deploy through Jenkins script. Okay, okay, you deploy through Jenkins script. So you deploy through uh, Jenkins script, or few people they deploy with uh, uh, CLI. Okay, let us start with this. Okay, so cloud technologies. Uh, these are all the facts. So anybody who has uh, who denies these facts, let me know. Uh, cloud technologies, like whether it is multi-cloud or poly-cloud or hybrid cloud, they are terrific technologies. They they open a lot of wings for us. We can achieve things that were not possible earlier. Adapting this, the mainly why we are we see there is a lot of rush uh, to adapt to these uh, cloud technologies, moving to cloud. Uh, this. Is, things are happening because we see that there are a lot, lot of jobs being created in the space and then there is a lot of revenue being generated which is always cool so that part we consider okay and now we are actually even getting into the next level where we say okay serverless can take even this to the next level to build loosely coupled systems so serverless Uh, technologies are considered that uh, we are going to build a loosely coupled systems and production like scenarios who i mean uh, basically we all like uh, to test our software in production like scenarios uh, because that provides great quality software so these are all the things that is happening now and uh, we do we all agree or anybody dis disagree with these any of these four points agreed in azure we have azure devops uh, pipelines also thing apart from jenkins scripts people are using that yeah yeah in azure we have devops pipeline uh, in i mean in in uh, in gcp in gcp you have uh, code deploy in amazon also aws also we have some uh, what is that cloud runner right in amazon what is that we use for uh, deployment cc i think cloud runner is in gcp cloud runner okay uh, aws has runner. code deploy and gcp has cloud runner i think cloud runner so what is the value add that we uh, we get to this so it makes our software development much much easier okay now that is what we assume let us see whether it is a reality so every time we talk about these cloud technologies right uh, everybody actually agree uh, the chat messages that they can see and then we all see that okay these are the great features to have and one thing that we miss out is if you really really scroll down after this features there is a word conditions apply okay and that's one thing that most of the time we actually make a mistake and that is in fact what we are going to discuss so the topic that we are going to discuss in a way it is a, it, it's something very very simple to understand but it's very very hard for us to explain it to uh, a, a broader set of audience so this problem is a generic common problem we will see one of that scenario why it is so difficult and how simple it is supposed to be okay uh, now let us uh, let us consider this uh, this very uh, very basic case uh, we talked about cloud deploy cloud cli i will just take one, i need i just need one volunteer uh, sanjay you are using some cfcli correct sanjay yep 
okay yep. so what is your uh, what is your api layer consists of what is your database layer i hope i understand uh, a, a, api spring boot yes yeah, spring boot cassandra kafka uh, kafka and uh, what is your database layer cassandra 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 is your database layer okay now let us get into this thing it's very very simple logic okay now let us think that we are going to build an idli shop we are going to make an idli uh, shop let us consider that what are the things that we need okay so idli shop needs an idli uh, i mean cook okay he is he is a skilled labor he can make idli so how do we make idli he can make idli with vessels so now there is a vessel like this he can make idli and consider we have an another uh, uh, copper vessel he can still make idli consider that he can have that golden star rated vessel he can still make idli okay so will he, will his skill anyway change that okay i am going to be a, uh, i am going to be an idli uh, developer but i can make only with this or i can make only with this or i can say only i can make with this because sometimes trade these are all very costly and this is a very common problem that we have now if you relate this with your own data uh, your own uh, your own systems right literally there is nothing called developing cloud applications okay uh, why i say developing cloud application doesn't make sense actually I, literally it is actually not not the right way to put it is consider that you have a, you have a system Uh, where you have a spring boot up, a spring boot application which is like your cook and it needs uh, vessels vessels maybe your kubernetes sorry not kubernetes kafka or uh, or uh, cassandra or uh, mongo db or whatever it is and then he can just build it whether you are giving it from aws or whether you are giving it from uh, pcf or you are giving it from ocf it doesn't make any sense to me because i am writing my api against my database development so if i am getting a mongo db i am re- i am reading a collection printing it and if i'm getting the mongodb collection i'm reading the collection from aws mongodb instance am i going to return something else no i'm not the problem bottom line problem here is we are putting unnecessary dependencies where if anyone tells you that you need to install aws cli to work with aws you need to install gcp cli to work with gcp it's actually literally wrong uh, based on the experience that i can confidently say it is it is literally wrong it is not something that we should do anybody disagrees anybody says no without uh, this plis we cannot build applications but then without that <clears throat> how do we execute those commands like um, i we have github actions actually not like cloud deploy and all so mm-hmm. github actions has got this workflow associated user can deploy through the application itself so while doing that this workflow internally has got these uh, azure cli cube ctl combination of commands all that um, building thing deployment everything mm. uh, doing init okay. containers and then setting up uh, in temp spaces all that stuff okay mm, without that cli how will we do that very good bala well it's in fact that's a confusion that many of the developers who are getting into cloud today have actually uh, so it's very simple Uh, just to take 20 years before or 10 years before consider that you are living in an uh, how many years of experience you have bala now uh, 14 14 okay definitely before cloud era also you might have developed some software right you develop some software you, you go to on site you deploy it in the you buy some machines in the customer location you deploy correct correct okay at that point in time where you developing your software with the customer machine that is every time you went to on site maybe your customer is in uk you go to uk deploy it come back again and then develop software go to uk deploy it come back again go to uk deploy it come back again did you do that no generally through remote we did that okay so consider that your aws is in europe location or something like that literally okay in that case every time whether you go or the computer takes you you are actually traveling okay why is the traveling is required because of our mindset change that said okay now with containers uh, consider uh, what is your back end layer uh, uh, which database you are using oracle oracle okay uh, what is your uh, uh, server layer no uh, spring boot for some instances and then uh, tomcat okay very good now with containers can you create a docker compose file which has a doc, which has a tomcat which has uh, oracle uh, which has uh, uh, you need everything to run your spring boot application can you put it put everything into an, one docker compose file yes yes we will do that okay now consider you are writing a code which re, which which has a rest controller that gets an input talks to your oracle returns the response now how much of a difference that it makes when you write a code that code in your docker cli sorry with your docker compose local containerized environment it gets the results from a particular table it is going to get the results from the same table even if it comes from the cloud correct 
right yeah okay which means the software or the code that i write no way ask me that no 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 i need oracle in the instances coming from the so and so provider no way it is actually asking it is just that our process the way that we put our documentations the way that we create our setup documentations they add this complexity provided we go one step back we actually optimize it in such a way that uh, we don't need to have any i mean we don't write anything specific to specific to an environment okay we can still make it uh, easy to write code for our developer correct bella right satish okay uh, don't worry i will ex- I, i will show that with the uh, sample also now we will see that in practice how it can be done okay and you are not alone uh, uh, even as i speak most of the customers that i work with i use my cli and whether we agree or we like it or not we are forced to do it because that's how the user manuals are written if you want to touch user manual that's one of the most dangerous task to do in an enterprise agree yeah actually we have a document which says installing azure cli is must before you exactly. proceed with next steps okay so to keep it very very simple it's the document that says cli is must but it is not the technology that says cli is must okay you will see it in practice now okay i'm going to create one very simple because as i keep saying uh, in our previous talks also uh, let us not try to learn it from a complex bigger software because in a from a bigger software what we learn is always lesser compared to if you take a smallest piece of code you can dig deep into the code you can understand much better idea about the technology that's always better so i'm going to show you very simple uh simple uh, uh, uh prototype where we will see this in practice okay now consider i'm going to make an idli uh, idli uh, provider i'm going to make an idli service so you see here this is uh, this is all that we do okay and uh, uh, i'm I, i i'm not you know, very fastly I, i i do not have any fastly setup i'm consider that i come from a very poor uh, startup background okay so i develop a service so what is that service is doing for me is uh, it actually connects to uh, it connects to uh, uh it connects your local store uh, and it prints me all the idlis so i have prepared these idlis now i'm going to parcel these idlis i'm going to uh, give this idlis to my customers that's what i'm going to do so i'm building my uh, project so it's a spring boot project and so it, uh, controller wise it's very simple we can go through the source code also so now i have my controller which is idli controller and if you ask me get me all the documents are idlis so it is going to get me all the idlis that's all that it is going to do okay now my software is building it's packaging my software it has packaged my software now i'm going to run my uh, multi cloud uh, shop so if this is my idli shop i'm running my idli shop uh, and uh, my idli shop is being run uh, locally now i'm preparing with the lowest possible uh, uh, results now so now you go and ask let me please so it is going to serve idli from local okay so where are these idlis are coming from these idlis are coming from here okay at the same time let us log into our cloud we are having an another uh, another uh, as well i am not going to create my software again and there are there are places uh, uh, where you might see right now uh, there will be enterprise products where we say okay we have an enterprise product we have an aws team we have an ocp team we have a gcp team we have an azure team anybody face this there will be some sophisticated uh, members uh, from different different teams to develop spring boot applications for uh, uh, this one now i build my aws shop now we will see how it works also you'll see bits and pieces do you see any difference now Okay, now I have built my multi-cloud shop. Now I'm opening my shop. So in my AWS instance, I have created an S3 bucket. S3 bucket is again it's like no uh, same like a file structure, but it is there in the cloud as well. i have my bucket here and i i prepared only one idli there okay actually earlier from local store it was returning three idlis now let us see how many idlis it is returning 
Uh, hope it started the application. Now it started. Now let us run it. Simple. It leaves a third from cloud now. Okay. Now, do we need to do any code change, any setup changes? Nothing. As a developer, I take it, I start preparing my Idlis. I don't care. As long as I have a SL, I will start preparing it. Similarly, I have my database, I have my dependencies, whether it is coming from CLI or it is coming from Docker Compose, I don't care. I just keep writing my code. Okay. So, how this is, this can be, how the seamless switching can be done in Spring? Uh, anybody? What is a feature that we can use to oh, support thanks. the seamless switching? Excellent. Who answered? Sanjay. 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 Excellent, Sanjay. So when you say profile, which profile that you mean? There are two kinds of profile, right? Uh, you spring, spring profile. Yeah, you can uh, write any profile that you want, uh, okay. depending upon app dash profile dot yaml. So, uh, but there's a cloud profile, special profile that act, get activate some Cloud Foundry stuff as well. They will be similar for AWS. Okay, excellent, excellent, Sanjay. So, uh, Sanjay's answer is it's a profile. So, when Sanjay means profile, Sanjay means uh, uh, meant uh, um, uh, uh, Spring Boot profiles. I hope so. So, now if you look at the service, right? Ultimately, I need I need to get the service implemented. Okay. Now, consider if I'm coming from AWS, I say, okay, if the profile is AWS, please load the service. This is Spring Boot uh, profiles. Okay. Now it will connect to Spring Boot. Uh, I mean, it will connect to the AWS, get the bucket, everything, and then it will serve the data from the bucket. Okay, but if it is coming from a local profile, if you set your profile as local, then it will actually talk to your local file storage and then get it from your local file storage. That's it, very simple, okay. Now, do we, we need to make it seamlessly uh, because there are other parts of code also. There might be some in number of logic, so we don't want to disturb them. So we want to keep the switching seamless, okay. Now, this doesn't stop that. The reason being, consider if you are using AWS, okay. If you are, if you need to connect to AWS, it needs its own dependencies. Maybe AWS S3 bucket client or whatever it is. If it is local, you don't need it. So in reality, it is not just sufficient to play with only your Spring Boot profiles. Actually, you can play with your Maven profile also. Now, if you don't do Maven profile, what is the mistake? What is the mistake? Why this will actually fail? Okay, very simple. Okay. Now consider that I actually. Mm, um, uh, I build it locally, okay? Uh, I, am, I do not have this uh, profile. I have only AWS profile. Uh, now I'm just building my uh, local build. Without AWS, I'm trying to build my local. Okay, now basically what is happening is consider that this is multi-cloud. You can create a profile for TCP. You can create a profile for OCP. See, now it, will, it says you have a class which, which, uses, uh, uh, which, which uses all the AWS related uh, items. Um, it imports all the AWS related items, but I don't find the AWS because it is not there in your dependency. Okay, so what we do is, even when you package it, right, Spring creates a factor, okay? Now, if you're deploying it to OCP, you will have some set of libraries. GCP has GCP starter for Spring Boot. AWS has AWS starter for Spring Boot. So there are some specific dependencies. They need to be available only for that thing, okay? So here is the place where most of the people mistake, actually. They don't optimize this, and they create it, and then they override it. It will create problems later. That problems we'll see in detail some other session, okay? But now what we can do is to, clean, to, to make it cleaner, what I'm saying is, in my local profile, I don't need anything related to AWS. One, point number two, only if it is AWS profile, then I will include a dependency for Spring Boot Cloud Starter AWS. Clean. Now, when you build it, you can see what is the difference that it makes. Now, let us see. I'm doing a Maven clean package here without giving any of the profile information. So basically, it is like this. You develop your software in, an, in a way that it is not specific to uh, your environment same old way uh, before what we were doing uh, before the cloud actually. So now the code should not have any dependency whether I'm doing it for AWS or something, I just keep it locally. So now it's building the software. What is the command to check the file size in Linux? Now I'm listing target. So how do I see the size of the file? Uh, it, 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 thanks, thanks, Raghav. Uh, mm -hmm. Now look, let us look at this uh, finally developed guitar. It's uh, 17, 17 MB. Okay. Now I'm going to build it for uh, AWS. So I'm saying 
my profile is aws now this is the only time that it makes your build specific to a vendor not during your development time that's a major major difference now let us see how it builds in app Twenty eight MB. So, because it adds that additional item that is required for your own vendors, it might vary based on GCP or Azure or whatever it is, and that's how it builds the software. Okay. Now, what happens? Why should not I use AWS? Why are you saying I should not use AWS client or whatever it is? It's not for any. I mean, this, these tools are great. Okay, there's no denial. But let us just consider this. Okay. So. what is the problem that you bring in anybody who has faced this problem please uh, please uh, keep sharing uh, okay so now by having your dependency with your environment okay now you will get into these things one is resource shortage cost you are, we are unnecessarily bringing cost of cloud Uh, I mean, uh, we are actually unnecessarily creating the cost of you no know, buying AWS instances, buying AWS access for your. I mean, ultimately we need we need to pay right, whether we pay or our company pays. We are actually paying the amount right. That cost is unnecessary. One okay, is cost alone the problem? No, cost brings lot of other problems also. Consider your company is either uh, not that bad to avoid all this problem at the root or. Uh, super rich to buy all the licenses for you. What happens is you will feel shortages, particularly when at the end of the sprint, people will say, "Okay, uh, server is down. I do not have access. License expired." Anybody face this problem? Please share it in the chat. Okay. So these kind of resource shortages will happen. Okay. And then all the common problem of sharing resources like conflicts. For example, we will be connecting to a MongoDB or a Postgres in the AWS instances. Where all my fellow developers will be connecting, and they will be injecting some invalid data, whatever reasons it might be, maybe due to due to an underdeveloped feature or whatever it is. And if they develop a faulty data, I will also be impacted. Basically, someone else's mistake will affect someone else who doesn't even have anything with that mistake. And these kind of confusions and conflicts can happen. Okay, we can avoid all that by going with an vendor neutral approach we can say developer focus only on development and that is one simple key advantage so now if you look at if you revisit our nice things here okay cloud technologies uh, are terrific but if you don't up, only when cloud technologies are terrific when you apply it proper, properly if you don't apply it properly it can uh, easily become uh, very difficult actually okay and also adapting these technologies will create jobs and then create revenue yes but whether we are creating it for our own company or our own company's revenue or somebody else's revenue that's all that makes a difference so it is not uh, always cool and serverless and here here i have a very interesting story but we will go that later, go to that later but this uh, why even after understanding all this companies are actually uh, using this uh, uh, this not so good approaches uh, our our interest towards this word called production like scenarios okay production like scenarios are different and then uh, these kind of things cannot be combined with production like scenario whether you uh, whether you take take anything from your local uh, containers or aws or whatever it is it's actually same and this is no way related to production like scenarios now uh, coming to the serverless technologies so uh, any uh, uh, so this, uh, i would like just in uh, ask a question here yeah. Yes. so what you're basically trying when I, what i was what i basically understood from your observations were that we need us we don't need a snap we at max might need a snapshot of a production like data mm-hmm. which is available locally and continue with our development as in the developer focuses on development rather than to actually connect to a production like snapshot in the cloud and do development excellent excellent okay uh, in fact you got a very interesting word uh, word uh, sorry okay the difference is whether we are going to work with the production like environment or we are saying no we will work with production with the production 
so here if yes. you are using cloud you are saying with the production you are using yes. with production with yes. production always you have the difficulties right correct if you are you are having a restaurant which you build for an airlines okay and you say that i'm going to test production like scenario where every time i'll buy the ticket get the aircraft sit inside the aircraft and pass the ticket eat my idli and taste it it makes no sense because idli is going to taste same way even if you have it in your home so that is one fundamental difference this is no way related to production like scenario will you answer the question sovik yeah yeah i think i get it what what you're saying is that when you don't you don't have to work with production data you work with production like data like data exactly. leave the leave the uh, the what do you say the infra changes or those uh, you can better use your cloud resources with this approach yes yes and these points that we are saying uh, these are not just casting no one or two development sprints or something like that sometimes right this can be the difference between your product goes to market uh, market or gets scrapped also um let, let me take one very simple uh, simple example okay uh, there is lot of uh, lot of uh, talks about serverless and all those serverless is very good uh, who all are using serverless uh, maybe azure functions or whatever it is okay now i'll give a one simple scenario where uh, consider that this is an imaginary story okay uh, so uh, we were working on an uh, uh, ultra modern uh, software where we are going to provide certain services and somewhere down the line someone read that it is actually serverless which gets us loosely coupled systems so we were providing 10 apis at the time okay now we thought that we will create this apis through serverless and we prepared an architecture diagram which looked really really complicated so that the customer doesn't even understand but he actually thinks that something big is going to happen some latest and greatest technology is coming and everybody agreed we started developing our apis with server te- serverless technologies uh, consider it as a google cloud function or azure function or aws lambda uh, anybody sees any mistake here before even we start the consider that we are going to start the project before we start the project anybody denies or anybody agrees that this is an excellent ap- approach or this is a stupid approach just give it a try developing apis with serverless how good or how bad it is if you don't have a, a significant amount of uh, usage of the api uh, in terms of cost it might become a cheaper one because you are effectively using the function only when you need it for the testing you don't need a permanent instance serverless will reduce the cost Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Because because it's like, for example, if I have a function which is supposed to return me a certain set of uh, you know values every time I call the function. Now, if I have to implement the same function in an actual EC2 instance, I'm going to have that EC2 instance running. And most people don't shut down EC2 instances out of office hours. It will be running 24 by 7, and the cost will be higher compared to a serverless function which is only charging you for as many times you have called it. Okay. super excellent so in fact this is this is exactly what i wanted okay now this is what our uh, our development teams idea also by going there we are reducing the cost okay but practicality i'll tell you okay it is not going to reduce the cost it cost actually it actually increases the cost i'll tell you why okay consider you are writing an e-commerce application so listing a product and listing a product is an api which you actually show you you somewhat you put it in the serverless technologies okay now the thing is it's not like no serverless comes without any cost serverless has certain cost for example serverless has this problem called cold start okay what is cold start time it takes to boot up your app you need to do a full start complete exactly every bring time, it down and start it up again every time you need to start a survey you need to call a function it needs to start that function and then it calls the function this becomes even tricky with technologies like java because it's virtual machine based so you have the problem of starting your booting up your jvm that warm up time is always there so it's going to take uh, take some time so there will be performance hit okay one point number two testability where if i say get product or uh, get product i open the mongo db and then see the product i can see directly but now what happens is here my developer says okay no 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 this is a cloud function okay it's not easy to test it you upload the function to aws run the function see the output so it becomes additional set of steps okay and down the line we created it was 10 year later but then we started creating 10 100 plus services okay now basically the problem is consider a customer okay earlier if you puts it with single simple sing spring boot apis okay you are you will not have the cold start now the performance is lower when the customer is saying 
but my performance is lower and you are saying no no it is a loosely coupled system performance is lower okay now the customer is saying i am not able to test it i'm uh, the release quality is bad then you will say then if you say okay uh, no no we are using loosely coupled system advanced technology so your testability will be lower okay and later you are saying that if you are increasing to 100 your cost will keep increasing and when your cost keeps increasing your customer is asking my my minute going beyond the budget and then you you answer the customer saying that we are using some latest and greatest technology so it is obviously it is supposed to increase your cost how will the customer feel so you are having a reduced performance an increased cost and increased risk with testability and you are saying we are using an api with the latest and greatest serverless technology so it's not a problem with serverless technology as such the problem is the way that we are play serverless is too good if you are doing a function if you are executing a function occasionally and you don't want to consume all your resources that is there always to save you but it is not like no you go and use everything with serverless and then you create a problem so this is one one common misuse of this one and what happened to the uh, project i will leave it after six months what happened to the project uh, i i leave it up to your imagination so every developer started uh, getting new offer because they used all the technologies but they were not in the company and the project project was also not there in the company any doubt so so, so, so is it is it fair to say that serverless is not a replacement for an application server don't treat use serverless as a the placement for an application so exactly uh, api development is different and serverless functions are different serverless functions are you can use it for background tasks or tasks that you do occasionally uh, that you don't want to invest in separate machine it, it saves cost but it entirely depends on what problem that you are trying to solve with the tool in a way we can say it's good for batch kind of scenarios yeah batch kind of exactly right exactly that's what i was coming to mind that it's it's like if i am doing a batch processing i don't need an application to be running 24 by 7 for it i need it for say an hour in 24 hours yeah correct and uh, like, i can tell one classic where generation. i don't know whether people use it uh, yes yeah, sorry yeah. report generation you can use it uh, okay. and mind it serverless functions has some limitations in terms of execution time also if i remember correctly 15 minutes is your maximum uh, maximum window so you cannot execute a large long running process with that that will add additional cost uh, one interesting scenario that we used where i personally felt that serverless really really added value to me is uh, we had this uh, blue green deployment where uh, we have our own virtual machines uh, and we don't want to copy our uh, binaries because binaries are very costly with what of reasons sometimes no binary sizes can go up to 1 gb also 1 gb of jar files or something like that uh, so now what happens is if, if say for example you have 10 machines uh you need to copy this uh, 1 gb of file to this 10 machines it's it's quite slow okay which you don't want to do it rather what you want to do is you want to have a common place where you get into the system copy that 1 gb and from that internal machine you copy it to rest of the 10 machines so for this making a dedicated machine doesn't make sense at all because we are not going to deploy it. Uh, always we are going to deploy it at will uh, any time that we want and that time we wrote a cloud function where it actually get server binaries and then uh, update uh, update it because the cloud function stays in a secured well within that network so it will be faster also so it deploys to everybody for blue, blue green deployment it was an ideal solution for us it saved lot of cost for us maybe code deploy uh, um, report I mean report generation uh, some batch process Uh, sending messages these kind of things we can always use serverless so this is uh, uh, all about this uh, multi cloud deployment uh, so just uh, just uh, on a uh, high level note uh, there are uh, this is not the only way okay uh, I, I, of course this solution will not work for you it entirely depends on what kind of uh, what kind of services that you use i used for the simplicity sake i used s3 bucket but uh, in practice what i am using is i am using ec2 instances uh, s3 buckets uh, i am using rds also and i am using it uh, local deployment without any aws uh, deployment uh, this one that you can pretty much do it but you need to give a proper thought by any chance if anybody says you need to have everything into your machine and then to do, develop the software please ask the question yourself please and if you cannot correct it you can always open your pom.xml file and spring profiles and see where people are actually going wrong it will be self it will be just a lesson for you even if you cannot apply it now in your project you can apply it later in some other part so uh, that uh, yeah so uh, this there are a couple of interesting questions in the chat i think which uh, we should probably uh, at uh, least hear the thoughts so there was yeah, a yeah. question from sanjay that you know what we must test our code with aws services 
uh, basically what Sanjay is talking about is the integration test scenario that you have to have a uh, have in your development pipeline have some set of integration tests and which cannot be done um, locally. A am uh, I right, okay. Sanjay? Yep, okay. that's it. Okay, uh, Sanjay, to answer your question, Sanjay. Okay, so uh, let us let us accept the reality. Okay, it is not like everything that you are trying to do, you can do it all in your local. Sometimes you end up having some sophisticated services in cloud. For example, there are some image processing services that you, you take it media processing services from AWS, which you cannot obviously uh, run it locally because it's not something that you can run it with plain simple Java program. And these kind of scenarios are always possible. Correct, Sanjay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. and what you do in those kind of things is, minimum that you can do is, you can isolate them into a library or a microservice. For example, if you have larger project, uh, consider you have 100 developers, at least not all the 100 developers are going to work on that AWS or Azure specific services, correct mm -hmm. Okay, maybe testing team needs it to test it with, you know, real center setup and all those stuff. So those who need it, they can always get it. But let us save those who doesn't need it for their daily job. They should be always kept away from them. Am I answering your question, Sanjay? Yeah, yeah. No, what I meant was uh, if you are uh, if your services are connecting to S3 or DynamoDB and uh, other AWS services, right? Then if you skip that part in from your local test, that's fine. But you need to have some kind of test, unit test or integration test to test your actual code, which connects to AWS. Because Correct. AWS has a very, like many hard limits and soft limits that that's not clear in, in their libraries. So once you do connect, then you'll start facing issues. Correct. For that, so, yeah. uh, you need to have some kind of test. Correct, that is E2E's, uh, E2E's, uh, mm, yeah. Yeah. for example, let us consider this, this case, uh, Sanjay, you are running this specific service, okay? Now consider I'm a testing person, okay? All that I'm going to do is, in case if it is AWS environment, I'm going to create you know, uh, an AWS URL here, AWS environment here, okay? My test case, but remain same, right? This is what I'm going to send, this is what I'm going to get, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can limit that kind of setup, right? You can very well limit it to your pipeline, whether it is uh, AWS code deploy or your own Jenkins, where you can say, okay, I have these kind of test cases, once every time someone makes a change, execute this against AWS, execute this against GCP, execute this against whatever cloud provider that you have. What we can save is we can just save our local developers where they were not even aware of that, how we are executing this. Ultimately, if they have written the proper code, it should work independent of the environment. Correct. Yep. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, I think Sanjay also mentioned something very interesting and that's something uh, organizations who are primarily using AWS can have a look at. He's mentioned something called as a AWS uh, local stack project. Yeah. Or is this, is yeah. it from somewhere? Yeah, it's uh, local stack. That, that's an uh, excellent uh, thing, actually, uh, what Sanjay mentioned. Um, in, uh, to be frank, we need to avoid that also as much as possible, but practically speaking, uh, you cannot make the decision most of the time. And uh, when you are given with no option, but you need to use AWS related things, please use at least AWS local deploy, because that can save a lot of money, a lot of time actually. So you're talking about localstack.cloud, right, Sanjay, if I'm not wrong? Yeah, that's the one, cool, I found it as well. So yeah, people who are, uh, you know, who uh, for whatever reason their development practices require them to test against AWS, probably they can explore this as a as an option. Uh, there was another uh, observation from Vani where I think she's talking about the non-production environment is AWS Cloud and production is on-premise. Would you like Correct. to- okay. Uh, excellent. In fact, uh, uh, one is, uh, um, uh, setup is actually perfectly ideal. Um, if you are developing a product, forget about the services, sometimes, right, when you're developing a service, right, you will be sure that, okay, I'm going to use only this, I'm not going to move away from that, with whatever reasons, it might be contacts with that provider, or it might be licensing with that provider, offer, whatever it is. But if you are developing an enterprise product, where you are expected to deploy it across multiple cloud for your customers, if you are developing that kind of software, right, it's always better. Uh, try to use 
different environments across your uh, across your uh, uh, multiple layer of environment for example uh, development integration qa staging try to use different different things for for local you can use uh, for uh, development you can use local uh, for staging you can use aws uh, for uh, uh, pre prod you can I mean, for uh, qa you can use uh, uh, gcp Uh, for integration you can use something else so if you give that combination right only or other way your software will be will be tested across all the environments and that will also in case that there is any gap someone made a mistake that they written something specific to a vendor it will easily come to your eyes uh, did i answer your question mani okay so uh, do this as an exercise uh, any doubts also uh, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask later also any point in time uh, in case if there is anything that i missed out uh, please put a note uh, to in our group i will cover it in the next week also um if there's no questions uh, that's all from me so we hope it was useful yeah anybody has any questions uh, there are a couple of interesting observations from sanjay around serverless so uh, in case anyone uh, sanjay if you can elaborate a bit for 2 3 minutes on that uh, just for your views i think it be easier for yes. to understand i mean everyone says that lambda is only good for batch but that's not true right because uh, aws has api gateway and that that you can connect to a lambda functions so it's not that you should not create apis but you should do some cost estimation and then use lambda functions for example if your api is going to be very busy like it's going to be called all the time then you would do some cost estimation and you figure out okay instead of using lambda functions a cost would be tens and thousands of dollar so rather put it into kubernetes clusters and keep it available all the time so that would drastically save your cost so then don't do it but if you, if your apis are not that busy uh, is just doing some triggering for some rather than for uh, customers it's exposed for some third party vendors and things like that then just go ahead with that right because it's simple and you can do it very fast uh, also uh, the important thing is like you can orchestrate your all this lambda functions with step functions uh provided all the serverless architecture that you have uh each component emits some kind of event so uh if you're building a serverless architecture wherein you want to get notified whenever someone puts uh image in in your s3 or any file then s3 is going to trigger an event that you can attach to a lambda and do some processing so uh plus uh, similarly for dynamo db as well if you if you expect some data to be entered in dynamo db dynamo db will will also notify and emit an event then you can trigger a lambda so it it all depends upon which services are using and which event can they emit and are those event uh, useful for you then sure like attach a lambda to it and do something do some processing okay uh, sanjay but yeah do do your yeah. cost optimization correct correct it's not just about cost sanjay i'll tell you uh, you you tell me whether this is possible okay consider i am providing two uh, apis you see you can you see my screen right sanjay yeah okay so i am going to follow this uh, proper rest principle and all those because these apis are used, going to be used by my front end developers okay i want to have my own specific standard way of creating this apis uh, in lambda if i'm create if, if consider that i'm using lambda as my api provider will i be able to create a uh, create Uh, my own urls sorry come again uh, say for example i have my own url standards mm -hmm. okay when you execute a lambda it will expose your rest endpoint correct with that rest mm -hmm. endpoint you will call okay and the rest endpoint is mostly post only mm -hmm. okay by posting you will execute a function that's a normal standard in uh, lambda correct yeah okay but in reality consider you are developing an api it's not just post right you will use post to push to delete uh, yeah. get to according to your own location right because mm -hmm. it is not just about a standard it's going, we're going to be there for your monitoring purpose a clarity purpose or whatever it is okay now by applying apis through lambdas we are having these kind of we are these are all man made problems right because these problems are not naturally there if you are using ec2 you can create mm -hmm. your own apis you can document it whichever way you want you have no problem of cloud starts you can still connect to dynamo db from your ec2 instances also but i agree with you there are some specific cases where uh, uh, i mean uh, you want to connect with multiple people make it as a coordinator and all those stuff uh, lambda has lot of value in fact it's a great tool but only problem is 
whether it is a right tool to use api these are all the practical problems we should be aware of these problems yeah you, you yeah, cannot definitely. create api uh, the way that you want uh, the way that you want it to be performed there is a, there is always a cost yeah but now uh, there are various libraries that helps you with that right so it, it's not required to have one niche to one lambda it's like for one endpoint you call one lambda you can uh, configure all your endpoints be it 10 20 Uh, directed to a single lambda, so it's always hot, right? Exactly. So you can do that, and then your in the lambda code, uh, if you're using Spring Cloud functions, right? Uh, it's very easy. Like you just have some kind of beans and functions, and then it will automatically map to your whatever is incoming Correct. based on signature and all this stuff. Correct, sir. So, uh, but again, yeah, but I agree with your point. Like it yeah, yeah. could get tedious and. Correct. You, your uh, point is correct, but consider something. Okay. Now, you, when we speak itself, you are mentioning about lot of good things, lot of things that is there in AWS. Okay. Now, if you have a hundred member team, do we have any guarantee that all the hundred members will have the same level of knowledge? No, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Many of that's that's the challenge. Yeah. So we are exposing them all this where they might actually the most probable cases they are misusing. Then they are using it properly. And that's why it's mm-hmm. all just better to keep the control with you. I agree with you. There are a lot of features, a lot of customization. Even this API problem, you can solve it in a different way. Okay, but it is like this. If you do it in a proper way, you don't even need to solve the problem. But if you do it in another way, you need to have that extra kind of skill set to solve the problem in a way yeah. that you want. Okay. That's yeah. I mean, uh, I had a similar question on this lines. Like nowadays, like developers are enforce a lot of different tasks as well, not just development, and that's this infra, right? So uh, if you take this example itself now uh, if if we were to build api gateway then lambda function and all that stuff right, then there were developers would have to be aware okay there's something called as lambda aws lambda then api gateway then i need to manage iam policies all that stuff exactly. then only exactly. my code yeah, will yeah. Run, right Correct. so in this so example it it says okay you need to be aware of so many things uh, then comes terraform <laughs> so correct, correct. there are so many tools Yes. So, is do you think that's going to be the future of developers that they have to become DevOps person as well? Okay. So, practically, Sanjay. Okay. So, uh, to be honest with you, um, this is just a peer pressure. Okay. Down the line, this should go because technologies are becoming simpler. They are not going to make your life complicated. Okay. But the thing is, the way that people apply technologies, it makes all the problems. And we are in a level where we cannot go and explain it to everybody because they will apply in a way that they want it to be anyway. Okay. But they will definitely see the failure because it is not known. It's it's not something. It's it's not magical. It's just logical. If you don't use something properly, you are going to face the consequences. And when they face face the consequences, they will come to the simplicity mindset. They will think only what is required, what is not required. And when we go to that, we will solve all these problems. Let us consider this very simple case, Sanjay. Uh, before this cloud deploy and all those stuff, you used Jenkins, correct, Sanjay? Have you used Jenkins? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we still Jenkins, do. What was that Jenkins was guaranteeing? It said, developer, you focus only on development work. Okay. Forget about how do I deploy, where I deploy, how do I run it, how do I apply DB patches. That's what Jenkins guaranteed. Correct. Yep. Okay. Now imagine we are going to the next generation of tools where we have code scanners. These cloud providers, right? They provide great tools compared to what we were doing in Jenkins. But now see the gap. Okay, where developers were just focusing on the development earlier with the limited features that Jenkins was provided. Now with all the new features that we have, we are unfortunately doing all the infra-related activities today. Correct, Sanjay? Do you see the Do you see the reality here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if that is there, there is only one way that people will mistake realize the mistake. They will come back later. So to answer your question, uh, you don't need to have the pressure of understanding this cloud app and all those stuff. Uh, you can. Trust me, uh, it is now anybody can create pipeline at will. You don't even need to know Terraform. There are tools that are coming. They are they are giving lot of abstractions. If you know what you want to do, the tools will help you within few lines of code. For example, GitHub Actions. We have GitHub Actions. Bitbucket also has certain certain something related to that. Where few lines of OML files will get you what you want to do. So you can focus on your development. Work as much as possible. Focus on it because that is the skill that is going to stay with you on a longer time. These kind of manipulated DevOps work, uh, it's not going to be a skill set because they are changing themselves. Did I answer your question, Sanjay? Yeah. Uh, hey, Sachish, Girish here. I have a perspective. Uh, like you brought about uh, Maven Profiles, right? Uh, the product that I work for, we exactly have this exact same strategy. 
that it's not exactly for cloud, but basically for different possible environments we could be running. We do have multiple profiles. But one thing I'm seeing as, as part of this team is that uh, I, this is just my perspective basically, but I think it brings in a lot of cognitive load and especially you know, people joining into the team are finding it difficult to ramp up. And basically, these are things that we used to use. Maybe profiles were something, maybe common practice a couple of years back. But this, uh, I see this seems to be bringing, bringing in some cognitive load. So in any thoughts, or any strategy okay. that you can follow to? Oh, okay. So, uh, Girish, this is what it is, okay? The profile I showed you because it's a very simple project. It's my own project. That's why you see it's just a single project. It doesn't have any other dependency, okay? But in, when you apply it in, in a real-time case, right, you have a way. For example, you can put a starter form. There are a lot of other ways also where you can take this completely away. Uh, we will keep it very, very simple, Girish. Uh, in Spring Boot, you are using some plugins, right? Uh, are you using Actuator? No, actually, we don't use Spring Boot. We use traditional Spring Boot. Spring traditional Spring Boot. Okay, okay, whatever it is, okay. But one key uh, key thing is today Spring Boot is a self-contained application where you can bring APIs at will. Okay, for example, uh, ultimately what are we trying to do with new features? New features means new endpoints, right? If you are giving a product management, you say a slash API slash product is product management. If you're giving customer management slash API slash customer uh, and related related URLs will bring customer management, correct? Yeah, the APIs are simple enough. The APIs are clear okay. enough like now, what you're saying. You know what you want to do. Yeah, correct. Okay, now consider that these are all separate, separate modules. Consider that these are all separate, separate modules. Okay, and you have your own starter pumps that you assemble them together to make it as a final connector. Now, what you can do is you can segregate these kind of profiles, uh, cloud specific optimizations, custom beam loading, all this you can put inside your starter pump. And then once you create this as a starter pump, for all your microservices, if you're using microservices or you're, if you're using uh, your own uh, monorepo, you can say include this library. And then the developers can just focus on adding their own endpoints, their own features. And if you can, if you can create that right, one, you will not have any, this kind of no uh, initial ramping up and all those because it's actually really simple spring boot that is what they are exposed to. Point number two, in later, if you want to uh, make any changes, you can make it in a single place. What, what did you say? You said starter for this? Starter farm. Uh, in Spring Boot, oh. you can create your own custom starter. Okay. okay, got it. So, so okay, see, for it. example, very simple. Customized starter. If you, are using, uh, if you are using JPA, right, you use something called starter JPA. If you are using web, you see, you, very simple. Okay, okay. I'll show you. See, Spring Boot work with this philosophy. I think Spring also, you can create something similar. Uh, you see, any feature that you want to add, I want to add a web, right? I'm asking, a, I'm adding a starter for it. You see here, right? So yes. just have that mindset that you are creating your own startups and the starters are neutral. They don't worry about all the complexities. Anybody who, who knows Spring, they can start writing whatever you want to do. And that environment you need to create at the beginning of your project. If you have not done that, you need to do it at least at one point in time. 